A in Algebra 2. We're going to look at the second part of Section 3.2, which is adding, subtracting, multiplying polynomials. We're going to start out with writing a polynomial function. Right. So the problem says Grace makes wind chimes to sell at the local street market. As Grace produces a greater number of wind chimes, she can lower the price per unit. The function v of x equals 48 minus 2x relates the price v to the number produced x. The cost c of making x wind chimes can be represented with the function c of x equals 12x plus 64. How many wind chimes should Grace sell each week to maximize her profit? Okay. So I'm going to need a profit function. Profit function. And they give me the price and they give me the cost so I can find out what her revenue is, right? So right here they tell me profit equals revenue minus cost, price times the unit sold, that's my revenue. So revenue equals the price times the number sold. So I'm going to write my equation for revenue. So I'm going to say R of X equals, so the price, they gave me that equation up here, 48 minus 2x, times what is sold, which they told me was x. So I'll multiply that, and I get 48x minus 2x squared. So there's my revenue. My profit, p of x, over here it tells me profit is revenue minus cost. So my revenue, 48x minus 2x squared, minus the cost, which they gave me right here, 12x plus 64. It's minus that whole thing. So I can say that my profit, whoa, what happened there? Let's see if I can get rid of all of that. I did not mean to get all of that in there. So my profit, equal to 48x minus 2x squared minus 12x minus 64. So combine like terms. So my profit is, I'm going to go ahead and write it in standard form. So negative 2x squared. I do 48x minus 12x, then I get 36x minus 64. So there's my profit function. The question asked me, how many wind chimes should Grace sell each week to maximize her profit? Anytime that I see an x squared and they're asking me for a maximum or a minimum, that's my vertex. So I'm thinking vertex, and I know that I have an equation to find the x value of my vertex, right? Remember this, h equals negative b divided by 2a. So h equals negative 36 divided by 2 times negative 2. So negative 36 divided by negative 4, h is equal to 9. So on my vertex, I know my x value is 9. I can plug that into this equation to find my y value. So negative 2 times 9 squared plus 36 times 9 minus 64. So let's see, 9 squared is 81. 81 times negative 2, this gets me negative 162. 36 times 9 gets me 324 minus 64. Add all that up and I get 98. So my vertex is 9 comma 98. So now I need to answer the question, since it was a word problem, how many wind chimes should Grace sell? So the x is my wind chimes, so Grace should sell nine wind chimes each week for a maximum profit of my y value, $98. Okay, so there we go. So now let's look at part two to this question. It says now the cost of Grace's materials changes so that her new cost function is this. Oh, again, why I want to do that. Oh my goodness. This does not want to cooperate with me today, does it? So her new cost function is this. I'll try circling it instead. Find the new profit function 
then find the quantity that maximizes profit and calculate the profit, okay? So we already had the equation for profit, P of X was equal to our revenue. Our revenue hasn't changed. It's still the 48X minus 2X squared minus, now the cost has changed. The new cost is 4X plus 42. So this is really 48X minus 2X squared minus 4X minus 42. So my new profit function in standard form, negative 2X squared plus 44X minus 42. So now, again, I would need to find the vertex of my new equation. So again, I'm looking for my vertex. So H equals negative 44 divided by 2 times negative 2. Negative 44 divided by negative 4 gets me positive 11. So now I know we're having to sell 11 wind chimes. I want to know what the profit would be. Plug 11 into this new equation. Negative 2 times 11 squared plus 44 times 11 minus 42. 11 squared is 121. 121 times negative 2, negative 242. 44 times 11, 484 minus 42. So combine all of those and I get 200. So my vertex is 11 comma 200. So this is find the new profit function. I did that. Find the quantity that maximizes the profit. So the maximum profit of $200 when Grace sells 11 wind chimes. All right. Good. So now let's turn it over and look at some more word problems. This time we're going to be comparing two polynomial functions. Okay. So here it tells me that Grace's profit function, y plus p of x, is represented by the graph. They give me this parabola opening down, and they show me that this is 0, negative 64. Naomi's profit from selling x flower pots can be modeled by the function r of x equals x times x minus 3 times 10 minus x. First, find the y-intercept of each function. And who would lose more money if neither person sold any items? Okay, so Grace, y-intercept. It's easy because they have it on the graph. It is negative 64. So let's think about what does that mean in context of this? So that means Grace hasn't sold anything, right? X is zero, she hasn't sold anything, but her profit, okay, is negative 64. So Grace is losing $64. without selling anything, without selling anything. So her startup costs were like $64. Okay. So now we want to find Naomi's y-intercept, ABG function. Remember, if I plug 0 in for all of my x's, that gets me my y-intercept. So 0 times 0 minus 3 times 10 minus 0. 0 times negative 3 times 10, well, 0 times anything is 0. So what does that mean? Naomi's startup cost is 0. Naomi doesn't sell anything. She doesn't make anything, but she doesn't lose anything. So to answer the question, Grace will lose more money if no one sells anything. All right, so now part B, interpret the end behavior of the functions. Okay, so let's look at Grace's graph. It's given to me. It's a parabola down and down. Right. So what does that mean? Okay, so it's increasing from negative infinity, right, or on the graph, zero. It's starting to increase up to a certain point, and then it starts to decrease again. On the graph at 15, after she has sold 15 items, then she starts losing money. Her profit starts um, going down, right, into the negative, so she's losing money. So it costs her more money to produce things after 15 than what she will make. So the end behavior tells me that 
we have a finite number of items. Okay, so if there's a finite number of items to sell to maximize a profit, to make a profit. Okay. If we look at Naomi, I don't know what her end behavior is. I don't have it graphed, right? So, but I know that it's this, x times x minus 3 times 10 minus x. If I multiply all of this out, okay, so here I get x squared minus 3x. Now I'll multiply that by 10 minus x. And so then I've got 10x squared minus x cubed minus 30x minus, oh, sorry, plus 3x squared. I put that in standard form. I get negative x cubed plus 13x squared minus 30x. So my in behavior, so I'm at negative and odd. So that tells me that my in behavior is up and down. Okay. So the graph would look something like this. Again, down here, okay, this is my y-axis. She can only sell a certain amount to maximize profit, and then we're going to start losing money. So again, a finite number of items to sell in order to maximize profit. That's what their end behaviors will tell me. Let's do another comparison. So number two, compare the profit functions of two additional market sellers modeled by the graph of f and the equation g of x equals x plus 1 and 5 minus x. Compare the compare and interpret the y-intercepts of these functions and their end behavior. So we'll start with f. Okay? So f's end behavior, we can see from the graph, is down and up. Its y-intercept is 0. So if they sell nothing, they make nothing. But then look what happens on the graph. Okay? They sell between 0 and maybe around 5, that looks like to be 5, they're losing money. After they sell 5, they start to make money, right? So we know that F, seller F, makes money after selling 5 items. And look at what the graph does. The graph then just continues to go up, 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 up. My end behavior is up over there and continues to make money. And continues to make money for every item sold after five. Okay. So now let's look at G. So again, G of X, I don't have a graph, but I have X plus one and five minus X. I'm going to multiply those out. So for all these, I get 5x minus x squared plus 5 minus x. Put in standard form, I get negative x squared plus 4x plus 5. Okay, so this is g of x. I want to find my y-intercept. So g of x y-intercept is 5. My end behavior, I see I have negative and even. So my end behavior is down and down. Y intercept of five. So let's say, let's see, my y intercept is about right here. I've got x intercepts as well from that. So I can see x plus one equals zero. Five minus x equals zero. So here I get x equals negative one. Here x equals 5, so my x-intercepts are at negative 1 and 5, so my graph is doing something like this. So what that tells me, this negative 1, right, right, not going to relate to this problem because we're not going to sell negative 1 items. So sell a G, if my graph, they're only making money in here, right, from zero to five, and then they start losing money. It costs um, more to make more items than what they make selling them. So seller G 
only makes money. It's money when they sell between zero and five items. All right? So that is comparing our polynomial functions. The other side was writing the polynomial functions and determining um, something from them. Your homework will be like this.